Well, hello and welcome to another Faith, Philosophy and Life with me, Mr. Shelton. It's Big Me and Little Me today. No, it's not. Well, it actually is. It's from me from a long time ago when my daughter was born. Um, and this is one of the very first photos taken of her in the hospital. Um, so uh, what we're thinking about today is about the term sanctity of life. And actually, is life important? Well, I'm going to say and posit, yes, it is. But that's my opinion. And uh, you are well entitled to your own. And that is what we are going to be thinking about today. And we're going to think this is a, a lot of what we do and going to do today has already come up in the application of eco ethical theories of section five of ethics, where you've looked at natural moral law, virtue ethics, situation ethics, and you've applied all of those to principles like lying, adultery, abortion, euthanasia. And so a lot of what we're going to do today will apply directly to that. So you'll quite often find questions on the dialogue section of the Christianity paper based on the topic we're going to look at, because we're thinking Christianity and we're going to be thinking specifically about sanctity of life from a Christian perspective. Amen. OK, so thank you for that. Before we head on with this lesson in proper, go grab yourself a pen and a piece of paper. And here is our intro sequence. Okay, so welcome back uh, by the fact you're back in my assuming that you have your pen and paper. So our title today is what do Christians teach about sanctity of life? Okay, so today we're going to explore Christian beliefs about early stages of sanctity of life. It's going to be good if we can explain what Christians think about the principles surrounding sanctity of life. Great if we can explain how Christians explain their views on sanctity of life with reasons. And even better if you can evaluate if the Bible supports quality of life or just sanctity of life. So we're going to look at some terms. We've got a clip. There's a research task we're going to ask you to do and then some reflective questions as, as well today. You're also going to need your black AQA book one. Uh, if you don't have one of those, um, you may just need to do a little bit of extra research on this topic. Uh, but I have put the reflective questions uh, on this PowerPoint as well as in the book. So to start off with them, uh, I would like you to have a look at these terms and to write down the ones that you know already. OK, so have a look at these, write down the ones you know already and those that you don't know, write those down as well. But you obviously can't define them. I'm going to go through these with you in a few moments. So pause this clip and get written down what you know. These are all things that you probably have looked at previously. Pause me now. OK, so by the fact you're still with me, I'm assuming that you have those written down. So let's go through these one by one. So sanctity of life is the idea that all life is sacred, which is special or important. Uh, Christians would say that all life is sacred, uh, especially human life. It overrides everything else. So say the sacredness of life, the sanctity of life is one of the most important features of Christian belief. Quality of life then. It's kind of, it's not quite the opposite of sanctity of life, but quality of life is about how good life is. How good is the living of that life? In other words, if somebody is in intensive care, which is obviously a horrific thing to be, their quality of life is very poor. That's kind of obvious without me stating it. Now, if life is sacred, or the sanctity of life is the most important, then the fact they're still alive is the most important thing. If, however, you'd say, well, the quality of life is more important and actually somebody in that situation, that's just horrific and you wouldn't allow an animal to be in that position, then you might say the quality of life is more important. Personhood then. Personhood is the quality or, or condition of being an individual person. So it's what makes you unique. OK, and so 
that's a, a really integral phrase that you will have come across previously. Imago Dei, I can never say that, made in God's image. Okay, that comes from Genesis 127, where God says that he's made humans in the image of God. That doesn't mean that we look like God. I mean, some of you might think that I look like God, which is very nice. But trust me, I don't think I am look like God at all. But it means that we have the same characteristics of God. So, for example, God is love and so we can love. And that's the anthropomorphic language, which you will have looked at previously and certainly will go on when you do to do religious language terms. OK, the nefesh then is the breath of God, which is demonstrated through being breathed into Adam in Genesis 2 verse 7. So the nefesh is the idea of the breath of God. The soul then is the spiritual part of people, which is immaterial. OK, so I'm sure you know that from GCSE. Psalm 139 verse 13 to 16 is a lovely passage. If you haven't seen it before, do look it up. It's about the idea that God has created people as they are. You've got Jeremiah 1 verse 5, which is the idea that God has knitted together uh, people in the womb. So again, there are no mistakes with people. This is how God has made them. And then you've got insolment, which is the idea of when the soul enters a human. And you may remember uh, from work you've done on abortion that that varies and different people think different things about when the soul enters a human. Um, so. Here is a verse I'd like you to make a note of, which is the Lord gave and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's from Job chapter 1 verse 21. The Lord gave and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, if you know anything about the story of Job, you will know that it didn't go well for Job. Job is, is caught in the middle of a battle between God and the devil and God and the Satan are basically having a chat and Satan says well Job only follows you God because everything's going so well and God says okay do what you want to my servant Job just don't kill him and so Satan goes and kills all of his family which is horrific and then uh, Satan says but Job's still following you because you've not allowed me to touch him and and so God says to Satan Okay, just don't kill him, but I'll allow you to make him ill. So Satan gives Job boils and he gets very ill and his friends all disown him. And basically Job reaches a conclusion that he is nothing in comparison to God. And that is God should still be praised even through all the difficult times. So how does this apply to sanctity of life? Well, God gave life and God can take it away. That's Job's conclusion. So humans shouldn't be messing around with taking life or ending life because ultimately that is up to God's call to do. A couple of terms then just to make you aware of um, and that's the idea of the strong sanctity of life is that all life is sacred. Uh, it doesn't matter if that person is extremely ill or in a lot of pain or on a ventilator. All life is sacred. But then there's also a weaker form of sanctity of life, which is the idea that it needs to think about the quality of life as well. You've got to balance both the, the, the sacredness with the quality of life. And the other term that uh, you need to be aware of is embryo. Again, I'm sure you have already looked at this. Um, this is just uh, one that I've got the internet here, which is an unborn or unhatched offspring. Obviously, if it's a child, it's not unhatched. Um, in the process of development, in particular, a human offspring during the period from approximately the second to the eighth week of, after fertilization, um, after which it's normally turned a fetus. So when you are thinking during um, our work on sanctity of life, then you are going to be needing to understand what an embryo is. And that's going to be some of our research for today as well. We're not focusing that much on embryos. Um, we are, in fact, going to go on to look at the just war theory and weapons of mass destruction. So you might say that's not really got much to do with embryos. Well, no, but it's about life and it's about sanctity of life. So thinking about our outcomes today, then um, it said it'd be good if you could explain what Christians think about the principles surrounding the sanctity of life. And we've started to think about some of those with the key terms that we've already thought about. Uh, we do, however, need to spend quite a bit more time on that. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a clip in a moment. Uh, you just need to get past all the really cute babies that are in this. So what I'd like you to do is I would like you to write down at least three key teachings, at least three key teachings. Some of you will do a lot more than that through this clip. Um, and this will give you some more ideas about what the Bible teaches about the sanctity of life. So I found this on YouTube. Uh, three, two, one, random YouTube clip. Here we go now. Okay, so uh, welcome back. Hope that you found that useful. You got at least of those three key teachings down. The next thing then that we're going to do is I would like you to locate your uh, black AQA book, look something like that, uh, and look at page 315 to 317. And that goes through quite a few different sections and arguments relating to embryos and sanctity of life. All I'd like you to do is to go through that and just make some notes based on those pages. Uh, for those of you who don't have that book, the topics that you may want to look at are um, the idea about what different Christian principles uh, are when it comes to sanctity of life, what the Warnock report says, um, also think about the, uh, the weak and the strong elements of sanctity of life that we spoke about earlier, and some of the arguments that Christians might give for and against the sanctity of life. So, um, Go through that now and I will see you in about 10 to 15 minutes because I think it should take you that long. So just pause me now and then come back to me. Okay, so welcome back. So hopefully you've got that done. We're just uh, approaching our reflective questions now at the end. So we said it'd be good if we could uh, demonstrate what Christians think about the principles of surrounding the sanctity of life and hopefully we've done that really well. Great if we can explain how Christians explain their views on sanctity of life with reasons and again using quotes and things like that that um, we've looked at. And then even better, we can evaluate if the Bible supports quality of life or sanctity of life. And that's really what we're going to do with our reflective questions. I'm not giving you an exam question today. Um, I think you've done quite a lot of those. And next week is going to be a little review week. Give you a chance to get caught up for all the uh, philosophy work that we've done this term make sure you've got all your exam questions answered and things and sent through to your teachers. Um, so what I'd like you now to do is to be at page 319 of your books. If you don't have that, I do actually have that screen captured here in front of me. Um, so you can hopefully use that as well. I'd like you basically to answer those questions. It's unusual I uh, take stuff straight out of the book like this, but I do think that these are really good reflective questions and they'll really help you focus on this for when we come on to think about just war theory and weapons of mass destruction and think about that balance between 
the sanctity of life and the quality of life, but not just for individuals, but for communities as well. So I shall leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Wash hands. God bless. And hopefully we'll meet up real soon. And if you're not one of my pupils, all the best. And I'll see you just over a week's time.